I'm Fletcher. And I'm Randy. We play in this band Pennywise, but you probably already know that. <laughs> <laughs> We've all seen the bro him videos from Punk Rock Holiday. Tell me about that moment. How was it for you on stage? Um, bro him's uh, obviously awesome every night, basically. I like, I like the mayhem. I like when it's completely overrun by the kids and the kids or the adults, whatever they are, the fans. They get to come have like a really good time and be part of it because we've always been like more like inclusive of everybody and like try to create like a, a big party instead of like, hey, we're up on the stage rock stars and we have a big barricade. So no barricade, punk rock holiday is genius, but that was probably the craziest program of all time. Um, it was totally insane. It was almost impossible to play, which I like. And uh, the video of that with the drone and stuff is to people just go, what the fuck was going on? And I think at that show after, not in the video, they picked me up and like crowd surfed me for like 10 minutes, like carrying me around. I'm pretty heavy too. And uh, yeah, I was just laying there looking up at the lights. It was a pretty, it, it was my favorite program of all time. So yeah, it was a uh, Super awesome. What are your thoughts on the record where Solly is instead of Jim? Well, a lot of people don't know this, is that me and Randy pretty much wrote that entire record. Not Zoli. So a lot of people think Zoli like, wrote the lyrics and the melody lines, but he didn't really. He wrote maybe, what, 3%? A little bit. He would change like want to have or we'd have these arguments, but uh, <laughs> so we like the record because we wrote it. But he it. did an awesome job. He, sang, he sang good, um, obviously, but uh, it, would be, it would have been better with Jim, I think. I mean, Zoli hits different kind of notes and has a different range, but we could have adjusted anything. And, you know, it's just a bad, it was just a time period where Jim was gone and we kept going and Zoli, how do you describe Zoli? You know what, so what I'd say about that is that we never wanted Jim to leave. Things happen, and yeah. we understand. So, but what we did is we just did the best we could, because we, we wanted to keep the band going. So we did the best we could, and we worked our asses off. We worked really hard on that record, and I'm, I'm very proud of it. I think it turned out amazing. So it's kind of like a flower by a different name, you know, or a rose by a different name. It's just a... It's not necessarily a Pennywise record, even though at the time that was our choice. That was the only choice we I had. Th I think it's a Pennywise record because me and Randy wrote it. Right. But There's that. The, you're missing the main element is Jim. I actually would love to go back and record that record with Jim, but I don't think he would ever do it. But I mean, I don't even know if he knows. We don't talk about it. I don't even he, if he knows that me and Randy wrote it. He probably thinks like a lot of the songs are Zoli's, and so that's kind of a you know, a bummer. But if he knew that we wrote them, then he might be like, okay, let me go back and do it. Because people do like the record, you know, and that's cool. But it's it just, we didn't know he was coming back or think he was coming back. We didn't ever have that in our brains. Like, mm -hmm. We thought he was done forever. And, you know, Zoli, Pennywise is like, we're from a small town and we all kind of grew up at the same backyard parties and watching other bands and were part of that punk rock scene and Randy was from like right down the street Long Beach and so we all knew each other and Zoli was never part of that for us like so he although he was kind of funny and stuff his his value system was not so brotherhood He's, well it, okay it's just different because he was new in the band Zoli's a good guy He's, uh, he saves pelicans, he cares a lot, he has his interests, is he's very interested in, in, in uh, you know, like uh, kind of humanitarian things. And uh, he's a good guy, but Pennywise is Jim and Fletcher and Byron and me. So it's just, it's really hard to describe. Um, I, you know, Zoli I was funny, like. You know, he was funny, but I, I would say that Zoli didn't fit in the bro the brotherhood kind of, like if you want to call it brotherhood or like the the vibe that we had as a unit even though we fight like a motherfuckers and we've had all these ups and downs and shit he never fit exactly in with that like our our way of thinking about like taking care of each other i would say zoli was you're being nice and you're correct about the pelicans and humanitarian shit and the whales and blah 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 but 
internal workings would tell me that Zoli wasn't quite as good as looking out for uh, just like I don't know how do you put it. I don't know. We did one record, so we had a short time with them. So yeah. it's really hard to judge everything yeah, yeah, yeah. just based on that. So you know, but tiny little experience. It just wasn't. It just. Uh, he didn't fit the Pennywise vibe exactly. And then when Jim came back, it was like immediately like, okay, this sounds right, it feels right, and of course there's still you know fighting and problems and everyone's got issues with everybody from day to day, but it's more of like back to these kids that like lived in a beach town and all grew up together and listened to Black Flag and Circle Jerks, and so it just it's just right. Album's good, but you know, people could debate is it a Pennywise record or not. I don't know what do you you know. It's a Pennywise-ish record without Jim. Yeah. yeah, what I meant when I said it's not a Pennywise record, I meant it's like it, 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 not in the, the, the sense of, like, it's the one that stands out. It's different. But you have bands. You Black Flag had four yeah. singers. Shit. You know? uh, yeah, uh, like, Van Halen had different singers. Ba uh, Black Sabbath had different singers. And, you know, Iron Maiden, blah, blah, blah. You could go on and on. So it's a Pennywise record, but but I meant, like, in in traditional sense of, and it's, it's not the, the only one that's different. You know, Not so. the OG. So, when do you think you'll be making Ooh. anything new? It's so fun making albums. <laughs> I have to fix all his songs for him, and he gets really mad. Well, you, you know, as far as doing another album, I th I think maybe I don't know. I don't know when we. It might take a little <laughs> while. We'll probably do like some singles or EPs. I think that's becoming more of a trend because people are just so they're not focused on new albums now. They're focused on like. These three songs, they make a playlist on Spotify, and it's hard to get people's keep people's attention for ten songs. I mean, I love, I would love to do an album, but we might see. We've been talking about doing like two song single, you know, and then see where that goes, type of thing. So we, we talk about it, but it's it's definitely a process, and getting in there is not always the easiest thing because everybody's got strong opinions of what it should sound like, and it's like, hey, my song's really good. It's like, well, we don't like it. Well, fuck you, you're dumb. You know, so it's it's hard to get it. At the end of the day, kind of everybody has a little bit of input. Like Byron's like, well, what about this? And Randy's this. And, and it's hard to let people take your song, but it's really supposed to be a Pennywise song, not a, not a Fletcher or a Randy song or a Jim song. It's supposed to be everybody collectively. So that's why it's always been hard to write records together. Yeah. But we usually get like a pretty charged record because everybody's just like oh, let's go and you know so it's it's part of the the goodness i think comes from the aggression of like fighting for your ideas in a record yeah and and like because we are all we care a lot about it we're really passionate about the music we all want it to be the best it, it can be and there's different paths to that but also it is it is a struggle and it takes a lot i mean it takes a lot of energy and so then you have to weigh like do, what's the benefits of doing a new album? Like, why are we doing it? Do, are people demanding it? Because people generally like the, the old, old stuff. Shit. I don't want to hear anything. So, you our know. last album, like, we really <clears throat> like it. Like, and a lot of fans seem to like it too. And we, we've been playing like one, sometimes two songs off of this tour. We're not actually getting to that song. We had it on the list. But yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's hard to like, even for me, like, Bad Religion's come out the new album, cool. I'll get to it when I get to it. I'm not like running out the door to hear it. Like Metallica, same. Like I heard a couple songs, okay, this is cool. They've but, been making better records. But I want to put on like I Suffer, think. you know? And I want to listen, the, the ones that you're hooked on. It's rare that bands, you know, 10 albums deep are making their best record. It's yeah. very rare. But, you know, I mean, NoFX is good at putting out yeah. like good records every time that are pretty consistent and cool. But I mean, I haven't listened to one of their records like fully, fully for a couple albums. A couple albums back, yes, put it in. But yeah, it's just, it, it's hard to get motivated 10 years or 10 albums later, mm -hmm. you know? But we need to do it. We need to do something. Yes, yes, please. But speaking about no effects, <laughs> there is retiring. So who is going to be taking over for? What, what um, slightly overweight? middle-aged man is going to start wearing a dress on stage? <laughs> Not me. You I, should. I mean, I could look in the mirror yeah. if I put a dress on and go, wow, you look fucking horrible. 
take that dress off immediately. Mike doesn't have a mirror, apparently. It's kind of missing in his life. <laughs> I try to tell him, hey, you know, you don't look good in those dresses. I mean, you know, but continue to wear them. Stripes don't work for you. <laughs> but, I think yeah. he's making a statement. Yeah, I know. I don't know what it is. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I think, I think they'll be back. Mm -hmm. P people on the inside, like Fat Mike, say never again. Done, moving on to different things. Um, he's got a new band called Co-Defendants. I always want to say the Confederates, but um, <laughs> it's the Co-Defendants. And it's really good. I don't know if it's going to be the biggest band in the world. You know, but it's it's good shit, and uh, I don't know if that's gonna be his thing, and yeah. I don't know if No Effects fans are really gonna like it because it's kind of different. You know, it's not No Effects for sure. So I I think that he'll probably someone will come three or four years later and offer them a crazy amount of money to headline a bunch of festivals, and they'll come back. Like I already told him, what's up, Vince Neil? No, it's not like that. Okay, Motley Crue. No, and I'm like, uh huh. So we'll see. I put money on it right now, 100 euro bet or whatever, Danish kroners, 10,000 of them or whatever they are over here. They're coming back. In four years. And make it five. We're seeing the same um, punk bands headline uh, festivals time and time again. We have pretty much the same headlining bands this year. Do you think there's a lack of new bands to fill the void within punk rock? It's harder and harder for bands, new punk bands, to have a platform. And but I mean, it's all social media now. It's not radio. It's not record labels. It's not video necessarily. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely um, a good question because shit, no effects is retiring. How long are Circle Jerks going to be around? How long are Descendants going to do it? How long is Bad Religion going to do it? You know. So the more that they go away, then we'll just be like the kings. We'll be like, yes, we'll. We get to headline all the festivals every time. No, but uh, it'll, be, it'll be sad because, yeah, everyone's getting old. Except me, I'm like Benjamin Button. The more I drink rum, the younger I get. Right, Aaron? <laughs> and, then, and then the more everyone likes me. But I think we, I mean, like, I, I'll do this till I die on stage, you know, so I don't plan on Yeah, that's how I feel, Why? too. It's like too fun. Look, we get to drink Monster, hang out with you guys, drink rum. Vodka, you see over there behind the Doritos bag? Oh, yeah. It's a bottle of rum. This could... is Denmark. We're actually allowed to show that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I don't know what the Doritos are in the way of that shit. I don't like Doritos that Did, much. No, I don't eat Doritos. But yeah, see, so you got the Pringles can to put the rum oh, into yeah. for big, big cocktails. Yep, so. They've really made sure you feel at home. Yeah, well, we tell them that this is what we need to feel at home. Great news. That's for Byron, and when he drinks that bottle, <laughs> run away. Like, I'm bad, I might bite him or something, or, you know, pull his ear and throw up on you, but if Byron gets on that bottle and starts talking, just go, I gotta go to the bathroom, and then just sneak away. Don't ever come back. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. 20 years ago, when I went to high school, I mean, you guys were the biggest on the skate scene back then. Um, when I came home, I listened to you guys' music on the CD. When I was skating, it was on a mini disc. What is the difference from back then to now? The biggest difference? My knees hurt, so I don't skate anymore. <laughs> Can barely walk at this point. But uh, yeah, uh, skateboarding I think uh, evolved. I mean, still punk rock is involved in skateboarding, and we play, you know, vans, you know, parties and whatever. All, you know, still skating events. But I think. Uh, it's not as predominant, you know, a lot of skaters are into hip hop now and d different styles of music and that's totally cool. But uh, that that era that we were involved in was just, you're, they're skate punk, skate punk, skate punk, and everybody was listening to it to skate it. But I think uh, uh, Chad Muska changed it all, that motherfucker with his DJs and sh rap music and shit, and he just started making it cool. I'm like, hey dude, you're ruining it for us. <laughs> But uh, no, he's he's cool. He's awesome. I mean, you have you have fans as young as six now. I know that because my son started listening to you guys when he was two, and he has not stopped. Did you make him do it? No. Kids show up at, at the shows, so there's. there's it's really cool. There's a lot of parents that are bringing their ten year olds, fifteen year olds. You see forty year olds with their twenty year olds. I you know, know. and uh, that's we're getting this whole new generation, and that's one thing. Like, if you get into punk rock right now. There's a lot of really cool bands that you're never going to hear about because they're just 
in Milwaukee and they have an Instagram page and you're not going to find it, but you're going to see an Offspring shirt or a Pennywise or a Green Day and they're going to go, well, I really like this Green Day. What else is there? And it's going to be a Pennywise, Bad Religion, Rancid, Offspring. So you have this big, you know, these big bands that our kids are getting directed to and that's giving us a whole new audience. We have shows where there's just tons of little kids in the front row coming up singing every word and bring them up for Broham and stuff. It's really cool.